If you recall the very first episode of this series, we stopped at Battery de Gaulier, which was a battery of cannons that faced a great readout and bombarded it constantly throughout the Siege of Vicksburg. You can clearly see the great readout from Battery de Gaulier, for it was marked by the Louisiana State Memorial. So here today, we make our trek across the field to see the great readout up close. The great readout sat on top of a hill, so to overtake such a fort would require Union soldiers to climb up a really steep hill while Confederate soldiers shot at them and tossed hand detonated artillery shells, also known as primitive hand grenades, over the walls and down into their midst. Thus, it comes as no surprise that every Union attack against a Confederate fort at Vicksburg ended in failure. The Great Redoubt was the largest of these, thus the name Great. It guarded the Jackson Road, which led into Vicksburg. Union soldiers mounted a full attack on the fort on May 22, 1863. During the attack, men from the 7th Missouri Infantry made it to the base of the fort after suffering heavy losses along the way. They had bought with them ladders so they could scale the wall, but found out the hard way that they had made them too short. They then had to retreat back across the field under another barrage of bullets and artillery fire. The unit suffered 272 casualties in this half-hour assault. In addition to the Louisiana State Memorial, there is an elaborate memorial to Brigade General Lloyd Tilgman. However, he was killed at the Battle of Champions Hill and not at Vicksburg. His memorial here is most likely due to the prominence of the Vicksburg Battlefield Preservation. Where we are at right now is the Great Redoubt, as it's known. This was, as you can see in the literature here, a formidable obstacle here on the battlefield. Behind me, well, you can see some large monuments and some monuments to some men. And we're going to uh, make our way across here and take a look at the view from this area. Before I go up there, I wanna, I wanna mention this monument to Brigade General Lloyd uh, Tilgman. What in the world? He was the commander of the 1st Brigade of Loring's Division, and he was killed May 16, 1863, at Champions Hill and not here. Pretty nice, I guess, I gave him a statue here, even though it wasn't killed here, but that is, I don't know. I don't know who chose that pose, but he looks too happy for a man that died. So now that we're leaving uh, the general back here, who looks too happy to be dead on that statue, I know that's, that's a bad thing to say, but it, I don't know, that statue just is humorous to me for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, it's, it's a great ode to him. Don't get me wrong. He, he deserves to be recognized. But why do they choose that pose? Anyway, we're going to continue on. And we're headed up here to the top of the Great Rita. This is a bust of General Daniel W. Adams of the 1st Louisiana Infantry. Um, he was commanding Brigade Breckenridge's Division, Johnston's Army. And he was in this location with Louisiana men. And we're making a very hot, very steep, very brutal walk to the top of this great readout. And I can only imagine what these men were feeling when they did this. We're coming now into the line of the 7th Mississippi Battalion, who were here from June the 2nd. So final days, they were right here. Holy Madonna. It's about 100 degrees today. And this is the view. Great view. Horrible walk. So, from this spot, this was the biggest and the largest obstacle here on the battlefield and longest entrenchment I guess or readout on the battlefield itself that was a key position for the Confederate Army and for the Union to take and it was up under almost constant fire until being attacked later that May on May the 22nd and it, it was up under constant artillery fire so this position that you see here and behind here was constantly getting shelled. And man, you can just look at the earthworks here and how big they are. And we're gonna make our way to the top of this thing so we could kind of get a better, a little bit better view of the tactical ground in front of us. 
And this is a view behind the Great Readout. So this would have been a portion of the readout, probably where the men would have been living somewhere in this area. And you can't see it as well on camera as I can in person, but it, it drops off right here. So this is all portions of that great readout. And then I could see another piece of an earthwork here as well, right through this tree um, that is going back. So this thing goes out for a pretty good little ways. And then back here, we've been where men were probably camped, slept, ate, that kind of deal. Here's a view as we make our way to the monument. Oh, what a formidable monument too. But I'm gonna tell you guys, yes, I'm out of breath. Not gonna lie, it's hot. And this don't, the camera don't do it justice. This is a steep climb for my truck. But the view of the battlefield and the tactical view you get from here is absolutely just spectacular. This is the best view, in my opinion, in this section of the battlefield. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This climb beat me. This is a formidable climb, but it's definitely worth it. And I'm about to show you why. of the Louisiana Monument, which is absolutely huge. And this is a overview of the siege lines and the earthworks. And oh my gosh, over there's the battery we were in episode one. Over here is Illinois Monument, the uh, home we covered. And right there is the Surrender Oak the old visitor center. And this place is huge. You can just imagine the photograph that was taken here and then put that on top of this scene here. And it just, it relives history for you. It opens the door for history. And this is such an impressive view. If you can imagine all this grass guy and all this just straight dirt and earth, and this is the biggest fort here in this location. And you're being bombarded night and day. It, it absolutely just astonishing. But from here, you have a view of the entire battlefield, which I see now why it is called the Great Redoubt, because it is absolutely great. It is a great position for these Louisiana men. That was the great readout, the Louisiana positions here along the battlefield, and the biggest and most formidable position for the Confederate Army here on the battlefield at the Siege of Vicksburg. If you walk up to the top of that, if you're here, trust me, it's a very hot and hard walk to the top of that Louisiana monument, but once you get there, that view that you will have of the siege lines here at Vicksburg is the best view you're going to have probably anywhere on this battlefield and right now we're going to continue our trek into the city of Vicksburg out of Vicksburg National Military Park so until next time guys keep preserving history stay safe we'll see you on the next episode